Hi, this is Glenda in Shahid, and today we are making a Taiwan sorrel soap. This is a soap that my husband wanted to make. Um, I have here the oils. They are at 97 Fahrenheit or 36 Celsius. And in here, I prepare ahead the light water solution, which is just distilled water mixed with sodium hydroxide. It is at 24 Celsius or 76 Fahrenheit. That will be pretty much room temperature. Now he is going to make most of this soap, but I am next to him sort of um, watching over. And so the first thing he's doing is that he is adding slowly the light water solution to the oils and he is pouring them on top of the spatula to avoid any splatter uh, because this is sodium hydroxide after all it will cause burns if it touches the skin which is also why we're both wearing gloves and you cannot see but we're also wearing goggles when we were making this soap i was actually a little nervous because like i said before i never tried this technique but i knew that it required for the soap batter to stay fluid so i made adjustments to my recipe to allow for this because my recipe my usual recipe usually sets up really fast and it reaches trays fairly fast. So I added, I increased the amount of fluid oils. And the fragrance that we'll be using is Energy from Crafter's Choice. And I suggested that one among other ones because it's one of the ones that helps the batter remain fluid for a longer time. In other words, it doesn't accelerate. And next, you'll hear me give him some instructions on what to look for when he starts using the stick blender. Only do it for like three seconds because we, we don't want it to come to trees. We only want it to uh, be emulsified. So right now, if you lift it up, you see how it breaks down? Like one minute it covers the metal and then you can see again shiny. When it's emulsified, it's gonna stay there. Okay. Another tip that I could have given him was to look at the color of the batter. Like right now, you can see the yellow of the oils. It looks very translucent. Once you reach emulsion, it becomes creamy in a lighter color because it's become emulsified. And he actually did pretty good because he only used the stick blender for three, five seconds at the most. And then the rest of the time he was just stirring it with the stick blender turned off. Later, when I consider uh, the depth of the container, I did give him another tip like you're going to listen as follows. And sometimes when this type of container, you need to lift it up a little bit the thing, so that it blends the top too. Mm. Good. Lift it up to see if you reach a motion. Not right here. It's still breaking apart a little bit. So. I will say that in total, it took us about a minute and a half to reach a motion phase. At this time, you can see how the color is different from before. The left being had it look at the beginning where you could still see a lot of the oils just floating on top and then on the right when we're very close to reaching emulsion. And because it felt like we were almost there, I had him stop so that we can look again at the shaft of the stick blender. See, you don't, you, it's looking opaque. So as he lifted the stick blender, uh, we could see that on the shaft that part that before was going back to being shiny was remaining opaque. So there was a, a layer of the soap butter that was remaining there. That I couldn't see very well because I was next to him. So I did have to get a little bit closer. And then I was actually able to see that we were at a very light trace stage as well. So we went a little bit past emulsion. And it was fine though, because to do the Taiwan swirl, you are supposed to have a light trace. I was trying to avoid it so that I will have more time to do the colors and also to do the fragrance. 
Speaking of which, it's time to add it. And now in the bottle, I only had 1.6 ounces of the Energize fragrance. And I wanted to use at least 2 ounces because I had 2 pounds of oils. So I complemented it with another 0.4 ounces of chili orange or something like that actually i think i'm gonna show it on the screen uh, because i figure it went well with the um, energize that also has a lot of citrus and here it is sweet orange chili pepper which i was a little bit concerned because that fragrance says that it might accelerate but since i'm only using a small amount i thought we were gonna be okay and thankfully we were and I had him mix the fragrance with the spatula to reduce the risk of reaching a thicker trace than we had. So once that was accomplished, it was time to divide the soap butter into each of the containers. Uh, we needed about 10 ounces on each container. So it's about 10 ounces per color so that it would be all even. Which was important so that the divider that we're going to use will be evenly filled. And I'm also using these funnel pictures because of the divider. Because the videos that I've seen, it seems that it helps to have a longer spout to pour out each color into each section of the divider. Now we're going to be using use spoons and the spatula to mix the colors in. And again, this is to reduce the chance of the soap butter getting any thicker. So while he's still mixing, I, I had started mixing the colors. We had already put each color mixed with oils at the bottom of each container so that that part will go faster. Well, not as fast as the video will have you believe though. Now this is the divider that we will be using. It's something that I made with uh, some plastic from like a dollar store plastic cutter, vegetable cutter. And then I folded it and stapled it together at the ends. It is kind of messy. It is not ideal, but uh, it's gonna work. Then we try to place the colors in the order it, in which they should go into each section of the divider and over here we're having a little bit of a debate for which we had to bring back the inspiration picture to remember the order in which the color should go now the inspirations are birds of paradise however it's not going to be an exact representation of them now my advice to you if you're going to try this technique will be for you to decide ahead of time in which order you want to put the colors because we spent a little bit more than a minute figuring it out and the whole time in the back of my mind I was thinking oh this is probably getting thicker now just sitting on the containers now pouring it was the part we were both very nervous about because I had only seen it done in videos I never done it myself it took us three minutes from start to finish to fill out all of the cavities completely we had a lot of seepage at the beginning at the bottom and I would think this is something that if your mold, if your divider, I should say, is flimsy like mine, it will help to have somebody press it down or you could do it with your other hand. But uh, it was tricky, I'm not going to lie. And I didn't scrape the containers because I figured it was going to be too difficult to get, to get it in the exact places. So later I did scrape them, but just put them on a small cavity container all together. Then I just gently and just briefly tapped it, just in case we had any air bubbles inside. I think if I lift it and I pull it this way, it will minimize rather than going like this. Yes. So maybe I should lift it that way though, because we don't have any. Well, I mean, I'm gonna just put it in. And even if there is spillage, it's only going to be in the top layer, the very, very top. It's like doing surgery. Oh, look. It was fine. Yay. All right. Yeah. To do the stirring, I'm using a coffee stirrer. It's like a wooden small stick.
and I'm doing a pattern similar to like a U shape both at the bottom and then he started doing it he wanted it to do it more um, compact more tight and you can see that initially that led to uh, less points on the top uh, and as he increased the distance then you could see the orange dragging more to the edge and once he was finished doing the swirls he went around with a stirrer all the way in the inside of the mold I guess around the edge of it just to create that curve pattern for all of the swirls now the orange portion included both orange vibrance mica and also neon orange pigment this is because in the past I've had the orange become very light or pale and I didn't know this but it was because of gel phase it seems uh, the orange vibrance mica doesn't do well when it goes through gel phase it becomes lighter so hopefully the neon pigment here will help so I left it grab for the first 24 to 48 hours I believe um, and then at some point we uncovered it when we uncovered it uh, the soda ash began forming on top and this is how it looked like at the bottom then after three days we were ready to cut it first I had to cut it into um, the width of the soaps and then each one of those I'm gonna cut in two to reveal the pattern inside <laughs> 